Hi, everybody. Welcome to Novene C TV, and it's your girl, Novene C. So today we will be on our third part of our segment on COVID-19 and distance learning. So we've already talked to um, my niece from an elementary school perspective, and also my niece and nephew and grandson from the high school and middle school perspective. Now, this third segment is my two other nieces, and they will be speaking from a college student perspective and also myself. So I have with me my beautiful nieces, Kiana Williams and Anaya Kaso. We also have another little guest peeking through the screen, Nasir, <laughs> Anaya's son, my, uh, my great nephew who I was talking about the other day. And so um, can we please take a, a moment for each of you to introduce yourself, yourself, excuse me, to everyone, starting with Kiana. Can you tell us um, what college you go to, your major, what year you're in, and anything else that you would like to tell us about yourself? My name is Kiana. I'm currently attending Fresno State. It's my fourth year. I'm a sophomore, and that's about it. You're a what? I'm sorry. It went out. A psychology major. Oh, great, great. Anything special about yourself? Not really. Okay, what about being on the dean's list? Um, I think it was last, my third year of college, I made the dean's list both semesters, but unfortunately this last semester I didn't make it, but it's okay. I still finished with a 3.1, I think. Oh, that's awesome. And we'll be talking about that later. Anaya, we see you have a guest in the background. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and maybe your brother back there? <laughs> um, hi, my name is Anaya. I am currently going to Solano Community College um, for fire technology, and I have a one-year-old son. His name is Nasir, and yeah. Okay, what else? Um, do you have anything exciting to tell us about um, starting at Solano Community College, your awards or accolades? <laughs> um, so... This semester, I um, got all A's. I took 16 units and got all A's. So I'm awesome. excited about that. So are you on like the president's list or? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm on the president's um, awards list. For great. Me, so. That's great. Awesome for Thank both you. of you, especially because, you know, 2020 was so crazy for the world and also for our family. So I really uh, admire and respect you ladies because you've done so well, even though, you know, we were under a lot of stress and pressure, you guys also show that no matter what, you'll still, you know, work through it and do awesome. And I'm really proud of you too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so first of all, like I said, 2020 was kind of crazy and the pandemic happened and we had to start, um, you know, going to school from home. So can you tell me like, how was that transition uh, the first semester? Was it challenging or was it easy? Uh, please give me some insight on that for you both. Um, the first semester when it went virtual, at first every, all the other schools were going virtual before my school did. And I was like, oh my God, I hope this happens to us. I hope this happens to us. And I remember I was at school and everybody was talking about it. It was basically like rumors. And I was like, I, I hope this happens to us. And the next thing you know, we all got the email. It was like a movie. Everybody ran out of the library. <laughs> like it was the last day of school. We was like, oh, we're not going to When I think they told us we were going to come back. They gave us a date that we we're going to come back. So then I called my mom, I was like, hey, mom, it happened to um to me too. And she was like, oh, you're coming home? I said, uh, probably not. But I was excited. But then when it started, it was harder than I thought. So I, I feel like we all was excited about it. But then when we're actually doing it, it's like, I'd rather be back on campus because it is challenging. You're not in the classroom. Um, the teacher's not right in front of you. You're behind a computer screen. I don't know about... um you all professors, but for mine, we don't have to have our cameras on or the microphones on. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't have anybody like push you. you. If you wanted to, you can be laying down in your bed, eating breakfast. Like, I don't know. It's, it is very challenging. Right. What about you, Anaya? Um, so for me, as you can see, I have a little one to deal with. Um, it's fun, you know, because I get to stay home with him and spend a lot of time with him um, mm -hmm. as if compared to if I had to go to school in person. Um, 
but although he's super cute, he's a really cute distraction. <laughs> uh, so I feel like if I were in a, you know, classroom, I'd have my undivided attention, you know, focused on the teacher. But since I'm at home, I have um, a more fun environment, I guess. <laughs> right. But it does have its challenges and its advantages as well. Right. And since you live back at home with your mom, Anaya, how do you think, like, what do you think the difference is living at home um, with your mom and, and having, like, the help with Nasir, or if you were, like, living in a dorm with just you and Nasir? Mm. <laughs> Um, that would have been a lot harder because sometimes, yes, she does, you know, take them and, uh, you know, watch them in the living room so I can 100% focus on the class. Um, other times I don't, you know, want to bother her or, you know, have her watch him when she's already helping my younger siblings with their school. Um, so if I were by myself, it'd be a lot harder just because he's so energetic and, uh, you know, has needs and requires attention and everything right so what about you Kiana because right now you have your apartment off campus so how do you think what do you think the difference would be if you were living at home with your mom and your sister as opposed to you know how you live close to campus um right now by yourself well you know with a roommate um I think it would be a lot more difficult I'm blessed that I was able to keep my apartment I know a lot of people did have to go home but I stayed out here in Fresno and when I do I don't go home as often as I used to when I am in school because um my mom and sister uh, my sister's she's virtual too but hers is kind of different so they don't really know my class time even if I tell them you forget you wouldn't think I'm on a computer I'm um, sitting on the couch in class so they come in there and they're talking or my cat meows loud it's just a lot yeah I don't have privacy or um peace quiet it's hard to study um just being in every yeah it's a lot more hard at home mm -hmm. yeah like you said at first um we were excited about going home right like I was like oh I, I hope they uh, let us go home and at first we thought it was like gonna be two weeks or something like that mm -hmm. and then but then once you actually get home and then when my son was home too <laughs> and then um I have two, you know, the two grown sons that they come and go whenever, but it was kind of hectic because, um, first of all, when you're at home, there's so many distractions, right? Because you're like, oh, I could be doing this and I could be doing that, you know, like washing dishes or something. You get distracted easily anyway. And then when you have people living with you, it's hard uh, to focus. Just like you saw, like setting up this video, right? And my, um, my son and the grandbaby came in, <laughs> even though you say, oh, I need quiet from this time. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah we got you. And then they come creeping in, <laughs> make it all kind of noise, like your door's opening behind you and I, <laughs> I'll show you each other. <laughs> but that's how it is, like, because it's real, real life, right? And so they say they're going to give you quiet time or they're going to do this, but then they have to ask you something. Where's the jelly or something weird that could have waited, you know? And so, um, but, you know, you guys are doing awesome, like I said. So I'm, I'm very proud of you for that because you adapted um, very quickly. So what about, um, do you miss like every day getting up, going to school and, and going to class? Um, I would say yes and no. Sometimes I do. Like when I'm like, okay, maybe if I was in class right now, it would be easier to pay attention or I would stay off my phone. But since I'm not, you know, my camera's turned off, I can be on my phone. I can basically do whatever I want. But then when I think about it, like, oh, well, I can stay in bed all day in my pajamas all day. I kind of like this. So I think it just depends. I think it depends on the classes and the professors as well. What about you, Anaya? Um, so for me, um, well, so last semester I had an, one in-person class and then my other three classes were, or four classes were online. So I still kind of, you know, had to get up and go to class. And then as well as this semester coming up, I'm going to have another in-person class. Um, so I kind of get the best of both worlds, I guess. Right. So I can't really, since I'm still doing it, I guess. Right. I would like that um, if it was like mixed kind of. But so how, how did you see the classrooms change though with uh, COVID? Like what do you guys have to do different in, in the classroom setting, Anaya? Yeah, so that was completely different. So um, at Solano, we had to 
um, before, once we got there, you know, of course you had to wear your mask as soon as you got out of your car. So even in the parking lot, um, once you got to the classroom, you had to um, take your temperature with the, the teacher took your temperature with the little, you know, touchless thermometer. Mm -hmm. um, we had to sanitize and write down if we had any symptoms, um, if we traveled anywhere recently, and then as well as write our temperature down and then check, yes, if we were wearing a face mask. Um, so yeah, there's just different like procedures that they follow in order for us to have, you know, a safe environment right. as well as the desks were spread out. Um, they encouraged us to, you know, social distance, but the class that I was taking, we had to interact with each other and work together. So that was kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Um, and then towards the end, we had to sanitize and wipe everything down, you know, as well as like, including the desk, the equipment that we used pretty much everything. Right. So then when you said you had to document your temperature and stuff, so did they um, have you guys using the same pen or did you use your same pen? I mean, uh, your own your pen? Own. Oh, yeah. good. Good. Because I'm concerned about that um, stuff because like, say if someone is sick or whatever, and then you're touching mm -hmm. the uh, pen behind them. Mm -hmm. okay, that's good to know. So that like lets me and Kiana know like what we can look forward to uh, once classes start back. Yeah, hopefully and everyone speaking, takes the same precautions. Right. Speaking of that, um, how do you feel like about, I don't know what they're saying at your school, um, Kiana, but I know they're saying for, for UC Berkeley that in the fall, we might start back, um, you know, in-person classes. So how do you feel about that? Do you think you'll be okay with that? Or do you think you might be nervous or what? Um, they're saying the same for my school too. To be honest, I think it's going to keep getting pushed back. But if it, um, if we did have to go back, I think I would be, I think it will be starting all over again. Like I'll be nervous all over again, get the same anxiety that I used to get. Um, the icebreakers, you know how you feel when you're about to do an icebreaker. It's like, oh my God. Or when you have to read aloud. I think, I don't know, that would bring back all the, <laughs> like the anxiety that I had when I first started college. Right, right. That, that's how I feel too, kind of. Um, but I, I think when R starts back, it might be optional. So mine will depend on what, you know, what my son is doing. So if, if Xavion is fully back in school, then I can go. But if not, I can't just leave him here, you know, by himself. Um, and I'm way in another city, mm -hmm. um, you know, in class or whatever. So that would depend on his schedule as well. But uh, at, at his school, it depends. They, they're talking about going back in March, but I told him he's not going back in March. We'll let them, you know, we'll do the test run with everybody else. And then after we see how that goes, maybe he can go back in the fall. But he's not He's not going back on the first uh, when everybody else goes back. Because, you know, we've been doing pretty good. Our whole family has, like, you know, kind of keeping around the same people, you know, kind of like in a bubble. So I don't want to just, and kids, their age, you know, they are close talkers and they don't know what social distancing is because, they don't, they don't have that, you know, personal space. So he'll have to be the second or third run, not the first run. <laughs> and so um, what was I going to ask you guys? Um, oh, are your, are your classes recorded? Like, do you have to watch them real time or can you watch them um, later? For me, it um, just depends on the professor. Last semester, probably like, I think I had three Zoom meetings that I actually had to attend, and then the other two, they were recorded. Um, one of my professors that did have um, Zoom meetings, he would record the Zoom lectures for people that didn't make it. Mm -hmm. So it's half and half for me. Okay. What about you, Anaya? So for me, um, none of my classes were recorded. One of them, we, I guess someone had mentioned to the professor if they can be recorded, but he said that... Um, he wanted to, but it required everyone to sign like a waiver for them to, you know, be recorded. And I guess he said that it was not like too much work, but it was going to be too difficult or I don't know something. Basically, no. It could have been mine. So, um, yeah, our, I've been blessed. Like all my classes have been um, recorded. And, and that's one of the things that I asked first on the first day. Like if I see that they're not recording, I'll ask that. Are you going to be recording these classes? Um, because for me, that, that helps. Um, plus I have DSP accommodations. So if I was in person classes anyway, I would be recording on my recorder because I, I have to have that, uh, you know, I have to pl play it over again so I can retain the information. And so, um, 
but I still show up to class because, you know, sometimes they think if they record, people are not going to show up to class. But I still show up to class, even though, like Kiana said, I might be laying in my bed or I might have my granddaughter with me or, you know, a lot of stuff going on in the background, helping Xavier with his homework or whatever's happening. But I still try to, you know, listen to what is going on in the classroom. And then later on, when, when it's quiet, when the house is quiet, I can go back and, you know, listen to the lecture again and, and take my notes and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, grateful that they do record where I'm at. So hopefully when the semester starts, these other ins um, instructors also um, record classes. And one class that I have that I'm concerned about is a, is a lab class. So I don't know how we're going to do a lab virtually. <laughs> so that, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, so did you, did you guys have any questions or can you think of something um, that you could share with people to like give advice on how to manage um, distance learning or the anxiety from COVID or um, anything, especially my psychology major up here, Kiana. <laughs> Did you, have you learned any helpful tips or anything how to deal with all this that's going on? Um, for me, I'm treating it as if we were in person because I've always been a, um, very good at time management. So each semester I set a schedule. So for last semester, I forgot when my classes start already, but basically I would wake up, um, go to a, probably like two classes, take a lunch break, um, go to my last two classes. And then after my last two classes, I realized that I, even though it's at 350, I get tired. So I'm like, okay, after four o'clock, I'm not doing anything. The only time I did work past that was if I had like a presentation or a paper or something. But other than that, I'll wake up and do it in the morning. I'm not doing it past four o'clock. That's me time. I um, start cooking dinner at five, get ready for bed and wake up and do it all over again. So set a schedule, use a planner. My family knows <laughs> I keep a planner. I write everything down. Um, try to make Set goals like for yourself every week, even if they're small, like, oh, this week, like right now I have laundry and stuff on my floor. I want to get that done this week. Something like that. Just try to set a goal. Yeah. That's awesome. And you you definitely need to teach us more too about the um, planner, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I used to do that when I was younger, but then like now things are a little hectic. So sometimes I get discouraged, like if I can't stick to the schedule. So that's why I kind of, I mean, I kind of like have a mental schedule, but I don't write it, actually write everything, the times down, you know, mm -hmm. I write down a to-do list all the time. I always yeah. have a to-do list, um, but I don't write down, that's like how you said, you did two classes and then your lunch, and then you did the other classes, and then you said, I'm not going to do anything else at the four. That's good because you know your limitation, right? Mm -hmm. So that's good. What about you, Anaya? So if anyone knows me at all, you know that I'm a huge procrastinator. So that was something that I really knew that I needed to fix, you know, since we started doing the distant learning, as well as since me having a baby. And I knew that I needed to, you know, manage my time more wisely and set a schedule. So I went to Kiana and she helped me and told me about the planner. And in the beginning of the semester, I, it was like every week that I would um, write out what I needed to do, my classes. Um, you know, write down all my homework assignments, anything that had to be done, I would go and try to do it. It wasn't even just for the week. I tried to do it for the whole month. Mm -hmm. And that helped a lot. Um, I also have a really bad memory. So that helped me remember things that didn't seem as important. Um, and it just kept me on track. Uh, towards the end of the semester, things did get a little more hectic in my life. So I kind of like, you know, forgot about the planner or I didn't have time for the planner. Um, and it did, you know, I saw that it made a huge difference, that it helped me a lot. So that's going to be another goal for me this semester is to make sure I keep and stay with the planner and just um, time management, basically. Right. And I like how you, you're old school with the planner, too, Kiana. You have the actual one that you write in. I love that. And um, yeah. also, um, Kiamo, just last week, he has a planner, too. I don't know if you talked to him about that, too, but he started writing um, more in his planner as well. Can I add to what Anaya said about, um, I noticed that at the end of the semester, I start to fall off too with my planner writing stuff down. Um, and yeah, it does make a difference because you know, you have so much going on, your finals, 
either summer's about to start or um Christmas and stuff is about to start. So yeah, I do notice that at the end of the semester I stop writing everything down or I stop crossing the stuff off that I do. Um that I did complete and yeah, it does make a difference. Right, right. Well that's that's awesome, ladies. Anaya, did you have a presentation like so far, virtual? Oh yeah. Oh, so no, I haven't. Um, usually the teacher said that I had last semester, he said that usually if it were in person that they had a um, presentation for the final, but no, all of my stuff was just, um, you know, like essays that we had to submit or just projects that we had to submit. So no presentations. Right. I kind of miss essays. Like I had a couple of essays last uh, semester and I, I like, I like writing essays, I hate you know, presentations like this. I, I hate that. essays. You hate essays? Yes. Isn't that everything you have to do in your in your major? Mm, not really. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, what about presentations? Have you had any, Kiana? Yeah. So when we first went virtual, um, there was supposed to be a presentation in my class, but my teacher was stressed out and she was like, "That's too much. I'm we're just now learning um, the ropes of Zoom and everything, so I'm just going to cancel it." So and then last semester we had a presentation. So I was telling my group members like, "Oh well." Um, my presentation I had last semester, my professor canceled it, so hopefully this professor does too, so everybody was hoping and praying that eventually he was like, this is too much, and cancel it, but he didn't, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was stressed about this the whole semester, because I do not like presenting, and I'm like, oh my god, it's on Zoom, that's even worse, I was just, I don't know, I was expecting the worst. But it turned out it was way better than presenting in the classroom. Right. I don't know, just the thought of everybody, like me talking right now and Naveen subscribers are watching me, it freaks me out. <laughs> so I was like, the whole class is watching me in the silent and all you can hear is my voice. But it was basically only my classmates' um, faces on my screen where I can see and my professor, that was it. So to me, it's like, it's just it was just us in our own little meeting. Right. So yeah, it was way better than presenting in person. Right. That's good. Since I'm old school, like I'm the type that has to have um, my stuff in my hand, right? I can't like, I can't read on the computer for a long time. I can't, um, so like my, like my book, I have to have, I have to have an actual physical book. I have to read those pages. Um, also with presentations, like when, when my um, um, professors give slides, I have to print those out and uh, write them down. And so one of my biggest challenges, Kiana, I think you're the one who, Kiana or Anaya, I think both of you guys kind of helped me with that because I print out all my, um, I print out all my slides and, and write on them. But then when it was time for the exam, remember I had like, like I would have like nine or uh, 10 lecture, you know, lectures. And it's like so many slides and I'm trying to go through it, even though like, um, since, you know, you can use your notes, what am I trying to say? Since you can use your notes, I would kind of like rely on my notes and then trying to go through your notes looking for the answers. Um, I will run out of time doing my exams. But then one of you two ladies, which one was it, told me to like type it up, type it up on a, um, okay, on a Google Doc because then you can like search for the, um, for the words. And, you know, since I'm older, like I don't really know that much how to use like Google Drive and stuff like that. So that helped me a lot like just typing in the word and then it popping up in the, um, you know, the document that I wrote all the, the notes down. And so that, that kind of helped me. So some stuff is, I'm a little bit slower at and it takes me longer to catch on. But then when I'm, when I do, it's, it's, you know, it's good. So mm -hmm. it's like a learning curve for me with technology, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think that's how it is for um, a lot of professors too. Mm -hmm. Cause that, and a lot of professors were having trouble at the beginning with the Zoom, just like today, how I was trying to get you guys on a Zoom meeting or whatever, um, they would, especially like the older ones yeah, <laughs> that that still might write on the chalkboard and stuff like that, they were having a hard time with it. But then like, you know, the younger, the younger professors, they, well, the GSI, sometimes the GSIs would help the professors because the GSIs knew more about technology than the professors. So luckily we have all that here. You know, we have resources. I have my, my sons to help me. I have you guys to help me. So like I said, I, I really appreciate you guys helping me um, on my journey. And like I told you before, I'm, I'm very proud of the um, good work that you ladies are doing. And I can't wait to see like the awesome things that you're going to do in the future with, uh, with your degrees and um, 
and also just in life, you know, being the great people that you are. Hi, Jalen. Hello. <laughs> See, always. <laughs> um, is there, are there any other advice? Do, do you guys have any advice for um, like incoming students, you know, high school students going to, um, about to be going to college this coming up year? Um, anything about like being away from home? Because Anaya, at first you were, um, you were living in a dorm um, on campus away from, from your mom's house. So do you guys have any advice for transitioning from home life to dorm life? You can go, Anaya. I didn't like the dorms at all. Some people have uh, I actually really liked the dorms. I was blessed both times that I, you know, had to be in dorm rooms to have really awesome roommates. Um, but if your classes are still online, I would advise to stay home. In my experience, um, the dorms are super, super expensive. If you're not like able to have complete, you know, financial aid to cover it and you have to take out loans, it's a lot. So in the meantime, I would just recommend staying at home, even though if you, oh, I really want to get away. Yes, it's challenging to have, you know, school at home with so many distractions. <laughs> and it's, I think it saves you a lot of money and, you know, it might save you from that anxious feeling of, oh, I have to leave home so soon. You know, mm -hmm. this is kind of a good excuse to stay home just a little bit longer. Why not have your parents or whoever still cook your meals right. rather than having to rely on like the um, food court or whatever that you have at college. Um, just use this as an opportunity to save some money. Mm -hmm. So Kiana, you said you didn't like living in the dorms? No, <laughs> I did not look up with the roommate. It was just a terrible experience. But what about when you when you moved out into the apartment, your uh, first apartment that you lived in with roommates? Um, I was living with my friends, but other than that, um, my roommate experiences aren't the best. But some advice that I can give is to um, stay off your phones, even if your cameras have to be turned off. Um, even though you can lay down all day, try to get up. Your classes are only about an hour to two hours. I have a desk, so... It's so like use your desk or some people go outside, get some fresh air. Um, just try to get up and pay attention. It's hard, but you can do it. Right, right. You have to try to motivate yourself, mm -hmm. which is hard, especially like if you're if you're not the student in, in high school that's motivated um, on your own. Like if your parents have to, you know, be on your case, then it's hard to try to motivate yourself. But you can do it because you ladies are doing it well. And now you were always, uh, both you guys were always, uh, Kiana and I were always uh, pretty self-motivated, I believe. Um, no? What? Your mom didn't have to get on you about doing your homework or anything, right? I mean, no, she didn't. I, I knew I needed to get done, but like I said, I'm a procrastinator. So it's the fact that I do have to, okay, Naya, you got to get up and go, you know, do your homework or try to study, try to focus. Right. But yeah. Because if, if I don't tell Xavier to do his work, he just won't do anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so but hopefully he's still, done. he's still and middle school so hopefully later he'll get more serious about it is there hope <laughs> no hope oh. but <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go to college until my senior year so that's why I was like I really didn't care and then senior year I was like oh college so I had to hurry up and make up I took a zero period and seventh period so yeah it's never too late <laughs> yeah it's never too late I guess you see <laughs> <laughs> But also, uh, we're going to do another um, episode later talking about career day. Remember how Ma uh, started career day and how she, um, I think she got us um, thinking about college. And I think um, that's one of the reasons why, you know, what, how many of you guys have grown? Five of you guys have grown and everybody went to college. Everybody didn't graduate, but everybody went to college, you know? And I, th I think that has a lot to do with um, Mommy's career day and us um, talking about you know, you guys um, think about what you want to do and, and getting focused and making goals and stuff. So we'll we'll talk and tell the people all about the uh, career day that Ma started um, at a later date. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I believe, too, that was a, a foundation for you guys, you ladies, excuse me, and, and the reason why you are uh, where you are and, uh, and killing it, you know. So mm -hmm. um, because, you know, as a family, we got together and I believe we were all supportive of each other, you know, and each other's dreams. Yeah. 
Well, all right, lady, I would like, to, ladies, excuse me, I would like to say thank you so much for taking this time and uh, coming on Novine CTV and sharing your experiences. And so um, I appreciate you, ladies. And like I said, thank you for sharing your stories. Thanks for letting us come into your home and giving us some insight. And um, I love you all very much. And thank you, everybody, for joining Novine CTV today uh, with my nieces, Kiana Williams and Anaya Cassell and all the extra people that we had in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and um, please subscribe, like, and share if you haven't done so already. And I'm wishing you peace, love, and light. Bye. Yeah, thanks for having us, Naveen. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.